Histone dimethylase KDM5D upregulation drives sex differences in colon cancer. Again, published in Nature, June 21st. Um, and all we have is the abstract. Again, it's not available to those of us not affiliated with um, fancy institutions at the moment. Um, they begin by saying sex exerts a profound impact on cancer incidence, spectrum, and outcomes. And there's actually some other really good research I found that that really, you know, cl clarifies like to what degree is this lifestyle across many cancers. It's like, you know what, it's, you can't attribute all the differences in cancer rates um, to different decisions that men and women make. Like the fact that men are more likely to smoke and more likely to tell you to hold their beer while they do something stupid um, doesn't fully um, explain the, the differences. The contents of the subreddit, why women live longer, is not fully explanatory. <laughs> yes. So, so now there's some research trying to figure out, okay, so what might be the things that are actually going on that are attributable to you know, underlying sex differences? And uh, they, you know, this is a model, yada, yada. Um, Let's see, they say, oh boy, I, I can't even figure out where, okay, t take my screen off for a moment here so I can look at my notes. Um, I believe, do I have this? I don't even have this in the notes. Okay, so that one um, is basically finding um, that a particular Y chromosome gene, not Y chromosomes generally, but y, a particular gene that is found on the Y chromosome, uh, raises the risks of some colorectal cancer spreading to other parts of the body. Now it's a model, it's a mouse model. I would also point out surprising because the Y chromosome in mammals uh, is not a well-populated chromosome. The logic that is frequently advanced in evolutionary circles is that the rest of the genome can't trust the Y chromosome and has therefore shut it down so that it encodes primarily just the gene that turns you male. So, so precisely the other piece of research, so which is this one, uh, also published same day last week or week and a half ago, whenever, uh, in Nature, Y chromosome loss in cancer drives growth by evasion of adaptive immunity. Wait, 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 wait. Let me think about that. Y chromosome loss in cancer drives growth by evasion of adaptive immunity. So let's, th this abstract actually is a little bit less ridiculously written. So let's, right. let's work through it a little bit. Yeah. Um, loss of the Y chromosome, LOY. Loss of the Y chromosome is observed in multiple cancer types, as you just said, including 10 to 40% of bladder cancers, but its clinical and biological significance is unknown. Here, using genomic and transcri transcriptomic studies, we report that loss of the Y chromosome correlates with poor prognoses in patients with bladder cancer. We performed in-depth studies of naturally occurring loss of Y chromosome mutant bladder cancer cells, as well as those with targeted deletion of Y chromosome by CRISPR-Cas9. Y positive and Y negative tumors grew similarly in vitro, whereas Y negative tumors were more aggressive than Y positive tumors in immune competent hosts in T cell dependent manner. So, and, mm. and this is the first time you're seeing this. Yeah, I'm wondering. So <laughs> I don't know where this goes. Yeah, and, and again, I don't have the full, whole paper. I just have the abstract. Okay, so here, here's what I think. A, there's an interesting question I actually mentioned this question to Grider back when, before mm -hmm. she had uh, pretended she didn't know me. Yeah. Uh, and then she went on and did some work on it, actually. Um, the question is, okay, telomeres regulate how many cell divisions uh, you get to make, but you've got a bunch of different chromosomes. Which telomere is it? Is it the average? Is it the shortest? Whatever. Yeah. Possible that the Y chromosome, which has a special telomeric implication because... You will, you will recall I got very excited one day when I was doing the telomere library work mm -hmm. because I found that there was evidence that telomeres of sperm produced by older fathers mm. have longer telomeres. And the reason that that's interesting is that it provides a mechanism for a, an individual to discover some information about how safe the world they are in is and to convey a degree of longevity to offspring on the basis of it. So there's a trade-off between mm -hmm. cancer suppression and longevity. And the point is in a very dangerous environment, 
you don't worry so much about longevity because you probably won't live to benefit from it. So you worry more about cancer suppression. Mm -hmm. So if you found that you were in a very safe environment where you, your offspring could potentially live a very long time, then you might imbue them with longer telomeres so that their tissues could replace themselves better at some extra risk of cancer. Mm -hmm. So if the Y chromosome is specially implicated in a mechanism for censusing the world to figure out whether or not it's a moment for longer or shorter telomeres in offspring, then the Y chromosome loss here mm -hmm. might be, I guess I would expect it to be earlier in the cascade. I would expect telomere, I would expect the loss of the Y chromosome to liberate cells to produce more copies, which would then predispose to cancer. But I guess I wouldn't necessarily well, expect the cancers to be more immune evasive. So ag again, um, again, we don't have the full paper. Together, these results demonstrate that cancer cells with loss of the Y mutations alter T cell function, promoting T cell exhaustion and sensitizing them to PD-1 targeted immunotherapy. Mm. So that, impl that implies the T cell exhaustion, unless I'm mistaken, is the result of the fact that T and this is actually covered in, in the paper that Debbie and I ultimately wrote on this topic. Yeah. T and B cells have a special predicament with respect to how many cell divisions they go through, mm -hmm. right? Because the progenitors of the T and B cells, most of them are like bank guards that go their whole career and never get triggered. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to do a lot of cell division. But if you have a pathology that is causing a particular subset of T cells to react, they have to proliferate tremendously because the way that they get better at fighting the disease is through clonal selection. So you have to have a huge amount of proliferative capacity for those small set of cells that gets triggered, which is part of why lymphoma and leukemia are likely mm. cancers because you have a tissue in which you have to turn down the cancer protection in order to get the immunity. So what they're describing with respect to T-cell exhaustion is that the limits on the reproduction of B and T-cells are very high, but they're not infinite. Right. And so you can exhaust the capacity of a particular subset of these cells to react. And if that subset is necessary to fight a particular cancer, then the cancer gets liberated by exhausting those cells. Yes, I think that's right. So interesting. Yeah. So fascinating. Uh, I wish that we could say more. I mean, I think you, you've already, I, I think, intuited a lot from just, just that one abstract, and I'm not going to go back into the other one. Um, the research may be exciting. It does seem to be data-driven rather than hypothesis-driven. It does seem to be at considerable risk of concluding something. And, you know, in the, in the first piece of research, it's a gene on the Y um that causes cancer and it's the other one is the like it's it's the loss of the y that is indicative here and they're going in opposite directions right yeah. like ish not exactly because it's a gene on the y not the y um and you know the nature news article says taken together the two studies are a step toward understanding why so many cancers have a bias towards men taken together what are you talking about right like they're they're not supporting one another right but they're both about the y chromosome they're both about you know they're both about sex based differences in cancer rates. So I, I wonder. I think you're onto something when you point out this is data driven, not hypothesis driven. Yeah. And even if it were hypothesis driven, it would be narrowly mechanistically hypothesis yes, driven, very much not so. evolutionarily. Which means that whatever downstream applied medical benefits that happen as a result of this research are going to be narrow, reductionist, and as at least as likely to be dangerous as helpful. Yeah, but especially I wonder, given that we have things that seem to like broad, like at a gross level, go in opposite directions with regard to it's the why that's doing it to you. Oh, it's the loss of the why that's doing it to you. Like, well, okay, different cancers, different situations. Like, do not make a decision based on this if you're not also aware of what's going on over here. Right. Yeah. Um, in this case, I'm wondering. Uh, one of the coolest pieces of logic that uh, came out of the telomere work was why early sunburns are more likely to cause a cancer which happens late in life than mm -hmm. late sunburns. Yeah. And the idea, you will recall, was that because you have more cell divisions left before you run out of telomere, a mutation that causes a cell line to run away and reproduce without regulation produces a bigger patch of cells that can then get a second mutation that turns it into a tumor. So 
One possibility is that the loss of the Y is actually a red herring here. Mm. Because what's happened mm -hmm. is a cell that goes on to be a cancer and therefore be noticed by people who study cancer is one that escaped telomere regulation by the Y. If the Y is disproportionately likely to be the chromosome that limits cell divisions, that sets the Hayflick limit for those cells, then a cell that had lost its Y would create a bigger prototumor and it would be more likely to become a tumor, which would be more likely to be noticed by people who study tumors. Mm -hmm. And therefore it may be downstream of, it was the loss of the Y that triggered the tumor in the first place or increased the likelihood of it. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. the loss mm -hmm. of the Y that was involved in the immune evasion, right? Right. So I don't know, super interesting. Super interesting. There's a lot more to be done there. I mean, this, <clears throat> this whole area actually has some intriguing stuff around, for instance, um, imprinting. Uh, you know, so uh, genomic imprinting, meaning that some genes actually keep keep track of, um, you know, scare quotes, uh, keep track of which parent they came from. And so there's been some research I won't be able to pull it up right now, so let me see if I can remember. Turner syndrome, uh, which is where uh, a, f a female baby um, only has one X. Mm -hmm. uh, and so is X, oh, X not um, at that 23rd position. Um, apparently, you can, they, some research has been done now which can track, okay, but is your X maternally derived or paternally derived? Like, mm -hmm. which X are you missing? And so with regard to looking at, um, you know, it, so, and, and does the body keep track when you have a, a, a girl child with Turner syndrome who got her ex from mom and is missing an ex from dad, she is likely to be less intellectually impaired than when she only has the ex from dad. So the, you know the the imprinting is is there and it's 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 tracking what parent it came from and maternally inherited versus paternally inherited exes in girl children with only one ex um, are less impaired. So I a lot a lot to think about, right? Biology is very interesting. I don't know if you've ever noticed that. <laughs> Super but, uh, interesting yeah. and complex. So this like I that was a paper I was actually able to find. So that's the one I read as opposed to the abstracts um, on this, but. The stupid punchline of all of this. Yeah. Okay. The incredibly stupid punchline, other than, you know, as opposed to the science, um, which we would like to be talking about, is here. Let me see if I can find it. Um, okay. Here is the um, Nature News article How the Y chromosome makes some cancers more deadly for men. Cool. Two studies help to explain why colorectal and bladder tumors are worse in men than women. Not very far into this article, however is the following parenthetical. This article uses men to describe people with a Y chromosome, while recognizing that not all people who identify as men have a Y chromosome, and not all people who have a Y chromosome identify as men. Thank you for that. Oh, that's very clarifying. Oh, that's, yeah. So, I mean, at one level, thank you, idiot nature for sending you know us into a path of now uh, there's some stuff to think about with regard to cancer and telomeres and there's some stuff i'm now thinking about with regard to genomic imprinting um and but that that line there in this article that is explicitly about sex differences i mean all is lost like how how to to the point that we've been making this entire episode how could we possibly recover all right think about it when this they way. put that that sentence into a piece about this research. All right. So you go to a coral reef. You, now, please. Can I? You, you, <laughs> okay. you dive under the okay. water and you open your eyes. Mm -hmm. Things are blurry as hell. Yeah. Right? For obvious reasons we won't go into. Somebody hands you a mask, right? Masks are clarifying, right? Nature is supposed to be clarifying. But nature has become like a mask that somebody has loaded with mud, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you have a mud mask mm -hmm. that you are attempting to look, and it is not as clarifying as perhaps it once was. And uh, perhaps, yeah, maybe not. Perhaps the mud maybe is not. not as clarifying as the mask pre. -mud. These people should get a grip and they should uh, go back to <sighs> sciencing stuff because that was better. I just don't. 
I just don't even know what to do with this. You know what it is? That is a science don't hurt me wall. You remember I, your no, don't hurt me wall? Yeah, for sure. So, uh, you know, at the point that the Portland broke down explicitly and had protests every day that reliably for a hundred nights straight turned into riots every night. And uh, there was mass destruction uh, and people started putting up these signs, basically these Black Lives Matter signs all over their storefronts. And I called them don't hurt me walls. And I, and I um, you know, I have pictures of a lot of them. We talked about them on air. And, you know, that's largely what they look like. Some of these people were true believers. Um, and, but it doesn't really matter if they were or not. They were putting these up as as a as a form of contrition and basically, and some in some cases they were literally begging. They're like, I'm a female owned business, I'm a BIPOC owned business, don't hurt me, I'm on the side of justice and you know, whatever. They were don't, don't hurt me walls. Um, I don't, I'm afraid not here. I, I think that nature is captured. Oh, I believe it is. It's captured, but from the point of view of you, you, okay, you've got a piece of research. Maybe, yeah. Make some cancers more deadly for men. I mean, first of all, people realize something. If you rob us of the ability to talk about males and females in simple terms, and we start taking seriously the idea that if you say you're a man, then you are, then the point is we are actually going to lose the ability to analyze data to find patterns that are important to, for example, our health. Yes. Right? And who is most likely to be harmed by this? It's going to be women. Historically, the people most likely to be harmed by like, oh, let's just treat them all like they're the same, it doesn't matter, meant that the research was done on one class of people and it mostly was men. It's gonna hurt everybody. I mean, I, I, I agree with you that there's a special risk for women, but the we are, it is literally, I mean, it's, it's like the, the, the mouse telomere problem, right? Mm -hmm. The mouse telomere problem is a wicked problem because it actually means that whatever you study in these creatures has a big old asterisk on it that nobody's aware of. Yes. And so the point is you are now becoming blinder. The more things you stack on top of broken mice, the more you don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And so this is another, hey, you keep playing that game here, you're not gonna know what you're talking about 10 years from now. You're right. not gonna be able to know what the data means. And you're frankly handing a super weapon to the sophists who are gonna claim mm -hmm. that this sex stuff is all made up in the first place because the data is going to reflect chaos. Right? Total, total chaos. You, I'm not, you know, you're going to have women who only get to say they're chest feeding and men who get to breastfeed. And, you know, just, just complete insanity across the board. We used to think that the Y chromosome turned you into a male. But now you can see in the data that lots of people with Y chromosomes are females. That's what it's going to say. Mm -hmm. Right? It's going to be impossible to make normal sense if you let this stuff into science, nature, cell... Yep. these other places. So for fuck's sake, people, stop it. That's right. Right? Our ability to make sense to each other is at stake, and you guys are playing games with it, and you have no right. Yeah. Just before, you have something to say, but put the screen back up just so people can see it again, the, the counterpoint between the headline of this Nature News article and the highlighted, uh, mm -hmm. the highlighted sentence. Yeah, I think yeah. this is them admitting that they destroyed the ability to report anything scientifically, and so they're going to redefine the terms as they, was what they actually mean using the woke terminology, but they I think there were a number of these articles that actually used completely incorrect definitions of everything, mm -hmm. and you yeah. couldn't get any information across. That's right. And so they've actually yeah. made it so that the rest of the article can kind of work here. Yeah, it's just, and it's a parenthetical, it's literally a parenthetical. They've literally said, yeah. like, and, and what, that, what that is supposed to mean, a parenthetical, is the work yeah. could exist with the same meaning without this thing, yeah. right? And so at one level, maybe this is... This is like the necessary nod. This is the don't hurt me wall, as you as as you suggested. I think I'm I'm coming around to that perspective. This is like the little tiny don't hurt me bit. Yep. And and by literally putting that in parentheses, they have said, and you could just ditch this, and the same meaning obtains throughout the rest of the article, and it does. And in fact, you need to ditch it, else you can't take this seriously. And the, you know the rest of the description. Mean, you know, I don't think this was. I, I do. I do have concerns about the research that it's reporting on, as mm -hmm. we talked about. Uh, but it it doesn't seem to be suffused with wokeries, other than that parenthetical. Because they discovered that that doesn't work for this at all. You can't do it. You 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 can't talk about this research if you don't know what a man is. 
I mean, the, 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 the funny thing is, okay, the first part of what we talked about here yeah. is completely fascinating. And the pattern is bound. If you can figure out why the pattern is what it is, it is bound to make us much smarter about these very important topics mm -hmm. like cancer, right? Cancers yep. that are difficult to treat. So the idea that we, instead of focusing on this very difficult puzzle, what is the meaning of cancers that are lacking a Y chromosome? Why would that be? Is that because they're the, them becoming cancers was the result of them losing a Y and evading a hay flick limit or not? That's an interesting question that has, it's consequential for our understanding of cancer, mm -hmm. right? Instead, we're gonna talk about this stuff that isn't consequential for anything other than how confused we're gonna be in the future, right? Yeah. And that's insane. So, I mean, look, there are very good people who are studying in a parallel area. I would point out uh, Bernie Crespi and Kyle Summers have mm -hmm. done some very interesting work on the evolutionary dynamics inside of cancers, which is a very fascinating topic mm -hmm. because a cancer uh, basically dies with you. And so the evolutionary dynamics are bounded within the short period of time that the cancer is uh present and it unless I mean, unless it's are, contagious which there like are a few Tasmanian devil cancer to, right and i will is, yeah. bet you that a lot more cancers turn out to be this as well but yeah. whether they it's do terrifying. or they don't the idea that there's a whole branch of evolutionary science that is about the short period of time between the uh, yeah. instantiation of a cancer and the death of the patient yeah. um this is a perfect place to have that conversation yeah. and it has real implications for how you treat these things. So, you know, let's elevate the Bernie Crespies and the Kyle Summers of the world and get those questions addressed rather than this lunacy over, um, you know, when we say the word men, what we mean. 